Today's topic, after yesterday's video in which a woman was surrounded by 15 dudes and basically they were going after her nonstop. I said in the video, uh, if I was watching from afar and I seen this happen in late night, hood area, gas station, other than calling the cops, there's nothing I would do because there's nothing I can do. A lot of people felt like that was cowardly. How could you do that? And I'm not going to lie to you. When I first read some of those, I was just like, hmm? I was confused that you guys didn't understand why. But I think what I've come to understand now is that I think a lot of people don't understand what the world is like in some places. Maybe you can speak to this because you maybe have a similar lived experience. I've lived in a lot of places. The place I'm at now is safe now. And it's been safe for the last little while. But I've lived in places that were not safe. I've lived in places where there's war, there's conflict, where there's gang members that's common. What you guys are suggesting that young men do when they see this kind of situation is oftentimes a death sentence. And I'm not being hyperbolic, I'm not being dramatic. It is extremely dangerous to go up to men you don't know in a neighborhood you're semi-familiar with and try to interject. There's so much to break down here. Do not play with this stuff. There's some places. I want the young men to understand this. I'm not saying this because I want you guys to be coward. Having values matters. But also understand, you have to also value your life. It mm -hmm. matters. Right? You think you're doing a good thing by jumping in in a situation where you probably can't help at all. You're probably going to escalate the situation to make things work. And you're going to throw away your life for nothing. What if you got kids? They're going to be without a father. What if you got dependents? They're going to be without their sole beneficiary. Right? The sole, sole, sole provider. Right? What about your community? All the future good things that you're going to do, you're going to throw it all away? Even firefighters, trained people, trained, will not throw their life away to save somebody. Why? Because they understand the long term, as a firefighter, they can do more good if they stay alive. So they say, like, if your life is in clear-cut danger, there are situations where you're not supposed to jump in. Soldiers in war zones. Military training is super important. They say, just because you see something, you're not supposed to jump in. You need to assess the situation. Just because you see a conflict, you can't just charge. Because if you do, and you get shot in the leg, and now you're just sitting in the middle of the street, stranded, and we don't know if they're snipers or whatever, you're you put your you. whole unit in danger. You put other people at risk. But you wanted to be a hero, right? It's irresponsible. As a young man, I'm telling you, learn to swallow your pride and learn to assess the environment around you because it'll be the most important tool you have. Prevention is the best form of self-defense. The amount of stabbings and fights that I've avoided because I knew some shit was going to happen, I cannot tell you. You raise a point with the firefighters. There's sometimes like what you guys are saying is that every fire needs to be put out, right? And there are some instances where the firefighters, they show and they have information. Yo, there are five tanks of gas in the basement. We got to go. We got to leave. No, I'm going to try to save the build. That's you. That's you right there. I'm going to try to save the building. Boom. No, you have to leave and you have to evacuate everybody out. But you trying to save the building that's burning. Yep. That's you. That don't, don't, hey, no, but you were brave. You were brave, boo boo. Good job. But... Now, let's say you run in and so your best friend runs in after you who's also a fighter. You guys both die. Now the fire force is now without a whole bunch of people that they need to be able to fight future fires. There's consequences to these actions. Guys, okay, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to be as concise as possible. Just violence is not a joke. I know you guys see it on television, you see it in movies, but in places where violence is prevalent, where places where violence is the norm and violence is the rule of law, you do not wanna be caught playing with the wrong person. Because even though you may value your life and your self-preservation, there are people that are just looking for excuses to throw their life away. I know, because at a young age, I used to be like that. I would fight for reasons I cannot even explain to you. I didn't even understand why I was so angry and mad at the time. So when you guys come at this and you're like, man, well, what, this, you don't understand these people's mindset when you're in these situations. The slightest disrespect can lead to something way more. Bro, I grew up in the era where touching a man's air forces, you might remember this, was a potential death sentence. This man came in a club with white air forces, and if you stepped on it, it was a fight. It was a wrap in a crowded club. There were people that would look for reasons to fight that you would never comprehend. Violence that you're like, what happened there? And when violence escalates, adrenaline is pumping, you screaming, stop, this man's unconscious, does not matter. Violence, turning that wheel, that, that shit off, there's people serving life sentences right now for, for spur of the moment stuff, for dumb stuff, because they couldn't control their impulses. Don't act like it doesn't happen. And what are you gonna do? What are you, John Wick, Bruh. Hong Bat? Bruh. Who are you, Neo? Bruh. 
You're Liam Neeson from Taken? Is that what it is? Life is not a movie. Things no. real. Man, I've seen this thing in person. I've been part of it. I've been on the receiving end. I've tried to stop things. I've witnessed stuff on Facebook live. People losing their lives like it's nothing. Mother filming themselves doing some of this stuff. They just, they can't wait. They think it's funny. It's a crazy place out there. Let's say you're successful. Let's say you go up to these guys, you punk them, you grab the girl. They might look for you because you don't know what they're affiliated with, what kind of lifestyle they live. They might look, this is not a frat boy at some prep school university. This is inner city stuff. This is like places that police officers will not even go in some of these neighborhoods. So you, you think that you're gonna go with your manhood and be like, I'm gonna step in because I could do something. That's dumb. Police officers would see something happening and would call for backup before they would act. But you think you are going to be a superhero. Go ahead. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. You want to live by those values and throw your life away? That's on you. What do you That's mean? your choice. And I'm not going to... But I'm speaking to the young men who want to act on principle alone without using their brain. Guys, just because you see a crisis in front of you doesn't mean you just act. All right? And people will say stuff. If you see evil and you do nothing, then more evil. Doing something is not always better than doing nothing. Mm -hmm. If you see a fire, you just grab the closest bottle and you try to break it on it. What if there's gasoline? What if there's wine or alcohol in there and you make the fire larger? What? Do you not understand how when you interject yourself as a man, you raise the stakes even more? Because a man interacting with a woman is completely different than when a man comes into it. A woman slapping a man, nothing could happen afterwards and everyone would go home. If I go to slap a man in public, nine times, at, 11 ten times out of 10. 11 times out of 10. 12 times out of 10. <laughs> it's a it's rap. It's a rap. It's we a fight rap. It. I might be fighting with his homies who I don't even know around. It's crazy to me that some of y'all are so casual with violence that like you think you understand the ramifications. No, but uh, you don't understand. I, I took like a, a jiu-jitsu class in my local uh, YMCA. I don't think you understand. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good with it. Even mixed I'm, martial artists would tell you in a street fight, do not be using some of this stuff. No, because the street fight, there's no rules in the street fight. You're going to thinking, okay, I'm going to do this and that, and then someone's going to come behind, around the back and shank you, and then you're bleeding out, and it's a wrap. Yep. There's no rules. There's none. That's the thing. You can take all, all those classes that you want. Out there in the streets, there are no rules. That was, an that was an unfair fight. I was fighting this dude, and then this dude came out. Of that was just a street fight. Yep. Dudes can come out of nowhere. There are no rules. What do you mean two against one? Streets. It don't matter. If the point is to mess you up, they're going to try to mess you up. That's it. Yeah. You know, being a hero sounds great. You know, people tell you, you guys should, you, you, don't be cowards. I'm like, bruh, if I jump in and die, who's going to take care of my family? Are you going to take care of my family? Are you even going to show up to my funeral? Are you even going to think about it the next day when I'm in the back pages of a newspaper? Probably not. But you expect me to throw my life away for a stranger when I got a mom who relies on me for income, when I got siblings who will not make it if I'm not around? You think I'm going to just throw everything away? What I'm doing is not an easy decision. It doesn't sit well with me. I don't see this stuff and think, man, f*** them. That's not what I'm thinking. I'm just thinking, I got responsibilities. What can I do to help the situation? Aside from calling the cops, what can I logically do? Group dynamics. A group of men act rowdy. And they're not going to let nobody punk them or show them up. They don't care if it's your girlfriend sometimes. They don't care why you're there. People are like, well, you just go and say it's your girlfriend. What if the girl doesn't react in a way that shows that she's my girlfriend? What if she panics and stumbles for a second? Then I'll look stupid. Then these guys but are like, she doesn't know what the plan is. But the thing is that happens is that you're going to be going like, hey, she's my girlfriend. It's going to be like, there's another one that's trying to bag me. Yeah. I have these. I, I don't want that. I was holding this well with my... I don't need a cat. You don't know how she's going to react. See, if she dissociates herself from you, it's a wrap. In your head, it might work. Oh, yeah, I got this plan, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say I'm her boyfriend. Yeah. That's not how she necessarily sees it. You're just another dude. And you have to hope. She doesn't know what your intentions are. Oh, yeah, so this dude, I'm going to go with this dude. And then after that, I'm... You have to hope that they care. Yup. Because there's men who don't care if you got a girlfriend. It could literally be your wife, and they'll still go for it. I've heard some stories about people going to Jamaica. Not to, bat, not, not, not to, not to say that Jamaica is a bad but yeah. place, whatever, or bad or whatever. I mean, Jamaicans are like that. It's just, it could happen anywhere. I mean, I've seen things where the girl's like, oh, I want my, my boyfriend. And the guy's like, oh, no problem. Me not jealous. They him right there. They him over there, so. Me not care. Let go pick me over there, so. No, I me not care. Bring him here. Bring him over here. It doesn't matter. The example was in Jamaica, but that's what it was. That's what happened. But I've seen it happen everywhere. Oh, I'm not jealous. I don't care. In the spur of the moment, sometimes you don't even know what you're going to do. 
how you're going to react. Things happen, decisions happen, sure. things happen really fast. You don't know how you're going to react. You might react, you might not. But if you choose to look around and you have some kind of, 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 of enlightenment and you look around and you see things are dangerous, that if you, re you react, your life might be in danger. Yep. So what do I do after that? They break my neck, they break my back, now I can't walk. What do I do next? Yep. All that because I try to save someone and now I'm the one in trouble. What do I do now? Yeah. What if you die in the process? Now the person you try to save has survivor guilt because you lost your life trying to save them. And you may not have even succeeded. And the worst thing is that the same outcome could have possibly happened if you didn't do shit, but no one would have, would have gotten hurt. Yep. But now you trigger someone. And that's the thing. We always tell cops to be accountable and to de-escalate situation. But when you go up to people, that is the exact opposite of de-escalating a situation. And you might end up with the exact opposite. Yep. More fire. And you don't want that. This ain't a fucking dance hall jam. More fire. More fire. <laughs> <laughs> tell them, bro. This ain't this ain't this, this is this real ain't life. It. You are not Son Goku. There's no plot armor, bro. You are not the protagonist. You are just another minion, another side character, a fodder for the most part. You don't know what you're doing in these kind of circumstances. Because if you did, you would know going in is absolute lunacy. Nobody who lives in these areas, who sees this stuff on a regular, jumps in and lives a long life. I promise you. You're not. You're not. You're not living in some sh Yes, neighborhoods with gang crime is prevalent and doing that stuff and living a long life. The only see, the only way I see myself being able to step up is if I actually know these dudes and be like and know them by name. Hey, bro, yo, what's up, bro? You good? Yeah, yo, let her pass, bro. You know, you know, this ain't no thing. Oh, you always be like that because I ain't got the same. But if I don't know them, they ain't got no ties with me. They don't give a rats. They don't care. And even if you do know them, that shit's yo, nigga. What you talking about? And then you see the shift. Yeah. Even if I still know them, shit can still, you know, yep, shift. Go left. But I'm just telling you, the best way that I could say something is if I actually knew them. If I don't, if I'm not from the era, yo, they don't care about me. I'm disposable. In your head, you might think you're the hero of your story. Boo boo, you're a side quest. You know, we have a term for people who just jump in without thinking. We call them heat bags. Meaning, when you go out and you got a heat bag with you, could pop off at any time. There's heat bags on the other side who are probably accosting that woman, looking for an excuse to snuff you out, looking for an excuse to stop your head. Bro, I've seen people get knocked out, their head hits the pavement the wrong way, and they never wake up. That could easily be you. If you don't understand the consequences of violence truly, I don't care how much anime you watch, I don't come, care what kind of hero complex you have. First off, all you people with hero complexes, when it pops off, you freeze. Nine times out of ten, when crisis happens, most be like, like this. And it, I'm not trying to, take, to clown you. I'm telling you this because your expectations and what will actually happen in reality, you need to understand the difference. You're a coward, sh pop off. Uh, I don't know, man. I thought you was about to do something. Listen, when chaos is the norm, when chaos brews underneath any form of civility, I've experienced this when I lived in Ethiopia. I've ex it's, it's the same feeling. I've experienced this when I lived in New Orleans for a short period. I lived it when I lived in Los Angeles, when we were in Haiti. Bruv, I'm a 26-year-old man. I got people in their 40s who are panicking in these moments because they're not used to this kind of environment. And I'm sitting here like, oh, you thought you was a man in charge. The moment she pops off, all of you grown-ass men, because they've never seen it. They don't understand and violence. the worst part is that the, were people, we, the, were, the people that said that they had to careful for our safety put us up front in front of all the danger of all the danger and we had to deal with it yep. the people that said no because we're doing this for your safety but one sh pop off that's right they put us first and we had to be in charge and you have to know man when <laughs> men are staring at you with Bro. machetes they're rolling 30 deep Picks. they got roadblocks and they say what are you doing here if you don't know how to manage that situation or talk to people they gonna take you for everything. They gonna stab you, they gonna finish you off, they gonna take your clothes, they gonna take your shoes, they gonna take your wallet, and then throw you in a ditch and never think of you again. That's life in some places. Rough. That's life in some places. I'm not saying this to be dramatic or hyperbolic. I'm just saying a lot of you don't understand this stuff. We live so when you guys watch these videos and you're like, this is what I would do, I'm like, bro, go do it, and you're gonna live a short life. You're going to live. That's why I don't travel with people. Because I recognize that some people don't know what to do when they're in a lot of environments. I want to go to Brazil. It's cute. Okay, watch what's going to happen when you go to the wrong place. Dumb tourists taking GPSs through bad neighborhoods and just following it blindly because they don't know. Look, they don't know what they're doing.
It's mm. just you gotta think of these things. Think of the consequences. Just, just a quick story. Probably this one's probably gonna be like you know. Check the Patreon if you want to hear the story. Bro, every time I've had guns pointed to my head, bro, I never saw it coming. And when you're in that situation, bro, it is one of the strangest feelings you will ever have. There's just an idea like, oh, this lights can go out any second now. You just frozen, slows down. It's so strange. And those experiences, I was, I was talking to the guys about this. I said those experiences have shaped me in a way that like even to this day, I have certain like instincts that are not normal positioning myself in rooms, always feeling the need to be near an exit if I'm in a crowded place, looking at everybody that comes in and how they looking around. Like, There's just so many things happening in my head. And sometimes I'm with people and they're like, yo, what are you doing right now? And I catch myself. But it's because I've been used to those environments. So when I see that video, 15 dudes, you know what I'm looking at? I don't know what you guys were looking at. You know what I was looking at? I was looking at their clothes. I was like, okay, cool. The clothes is baggy. They could easily be hiding stuff. They're in front of a gas station late at night. Some dudes is running towards their car. Some dudes is just hanging out. Odds are a couple of them slaying some rocks. Probably got a weapon. Bro, in my head, the calculations are endless. I'm looking at, is there any security cameras? What's the nearest place from like civilization? Is this like an isolated gas station or is there a police precinct nearby? Do police officers even come around here? Do I know these guys? What colors are they wearing? Yeah, cause what colors are they wearing? What's the predominant color? Will these guys be able to recognize me? How far am I away from my place where if they drive around, they come find me? If you're not thinking about that stuff, bro, you have no business talking about this. But you, you just want to jump in. Go right ahead. And go ahead, do it. And when they come by and they shoot up your family and they shoot up your home or they come look at you and they just murk you in the street, then what? What was all that for? You're going to call the cops that are not coming. <laughs> You know what I mean? I got a problem. These guys are chasing me. All right. Well, I hope you run good. Young man, I'm telling you if you're watching this, <laughs> please be smart about these things. Do not think that rushing in is a show of bravery or something. Because they're going to say you were a hero for a few seconds. And then everyone is going to feel the absence of your life. And that matters. It matters. It's immature to just jump in without thinking. Do you don't care about your responsibilities? Yeah, but I got a sister. I would never let. That's great. Who's going to take care of your sister and protect her going forward? Who's going to take care of your mom? You have responsibilities. You've got to think. I don't say this to mock you or to say you're privileged. It's not that. I want you guys to value life. Do Don't what you yours. can that's reasonable, but don't throw yours away because it affects people around you when you pass. I got homies like last week having being held up at gunpoint. If they die because they act reckless, that affects me. It affects their family, the people that they provide for. You got to think larger. So just be smart about these things. That's what I wanted to push as a message to young folks. And that's our thoughts on this video. What do you guys think? What have you guys dealt with? What have you seen? So yeah, guys, just be smart, right? That's all I got to say. If you guys like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. We want a lot of young men to be able to see this to avoid violence when possible. We want to find good ways to be able to protect women and protect society in general. But... We shouldn't do that at the expense of other people's lives. That's my thoughts.